bite him like an apple. <laughs> you gonna what? <laughs> one second, one second, one second. You gonna what? <laughs> I'm gonna bite it. <laughs> what? What's happening right now? I didn't sing it this time. What were you oh, going to say? I was going to sing hello, but you didn't like it last time, so I didn't do oh, it. Oh, no, you can do it. Hello! Because <laughs> <laughs> last time you were like, is that going to be the beginning of everyone? And I'm like, yes. No, it's yes, good. Yes, it is. It's nice that I don't have to do anything to start it off. <laughs> yeah, but you That's did. Like. You did, though, in the first... <laughs> A ton of water just went away now. Sorry. Um, if you're listening, I just grabbed, tried to grab my straw with my tongue, and Tana froze. And I've never seen a more sensual look in someone's eye. And then all of the water went up into my nose. That was a sensual look because for me, what oh, I felt was meant... confusion. Oh. So if if oh, confusion to me is what it looks maybe, like, sensual. Maybe that's out. just what I've always seen when people. You are an Look attractive at, man, a striking no, everyone's man. Everyone's confused. Oh, <laughs> that's not. That's not. Anywho. Okay. <laughs> how's your week been? Oh, every time. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> my week has been good. I was actually really worried we weren't going to be able to have a recording this week because of my life. What are you doing stuff today? <clears throat> Were you doing stuff today? No, wh- no, no, I wasn't doing Did your today. hair? I did my hair, yes. Yeah, now different. I look like the pictures that are on our thumbnails. Like, well, okay, my face isn't done, but my hair looks a little bit more like it. Because, uh, so initially, you, you were blonde before because of a show. Uh-huh. And now you're back. And now I'm back to the darkers. But I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get back to my headshot colors. Oh, which okay. Is, which which is, makes sense. Yeah. But, which, yeah. but it looks closer to your headshot colors right yes, now. Yes, it, it does. It, this is a little bit darker, but it should fade. Do you have to do more or are you there now? I'm not there. Oh. So so this is the first step. It's going to fade and then we will come back in, in in like six to eight weeks and make it look more like my Ugh, hair. Hair is the worst. I bleached my hair one time and I, it was like an eight hour process. I because remember. I had to do, my, my hair isn't like insanely dark, but it's like, it's pretty dark. It's a beautiful color. And it doesn't brown. strip well, apparently. Would not get a lot of ones at the club. Mm. Because it likes to retain the color. But it, what it does do is it, it it grabs color very well, apparently. So, yeah. like, when I was younger... Sorry. It, it's Tell my me. turn now. Yeah, go for it. I love it. I love to hear it. That's all um, you needed to know. I dyed my hair. Go for it. But I... Um, when I was younger, I would, like, put red stripes in it. And it was, like, a very vibrant red. Because like, it, it grabs color very well. Were you, like, we were. And it was Kool-Aid. We were. When... Like, we were as in like my childhood, though you didn't know me. But we would take Kool Aid, and that's what we would use to color there, our hair. There was a time when I did Kool Aid, okay, and, and it worked pretty well. But then I actually just used hair real, dye, real hair dye. Interesting. And I would but love it grabs to see a, with red, just a little red streak. Yeah. Yeah. It, so I did black. Like Justin Timberlake, but with red, like the frosted Justin Timberlake. Oh no. Frosted oh, flakes. Oh, actually, hairdo. maybe that's fun. Frosted tips, but red. <sighs> I'd be kind of into it. Interesting. Have you noticed Frosted Tips are like coming back? They are. We were at the Barbie movie last week and there uh-huh. were these two boys there and yes. I thought, you look like idiots. I know. They'll, <laughs> they won't know until they're adults that it was a horrible <laughs> mistake. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we all did it in high school. Trust Everybody me. Everybody did. Well, actually, I didn't start dyeing my hair until I was 19 years old. Really? Yes. And it was more of like the reddish tint because it my, my natural hair color and my natural skin tone, really, I just look washed out and pale and it's not a good look i think you look good no 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 i my my first driver's license so i have native american heritage and my first driver's license i had been out in the sun so long that whole like like that whole summer very tan very tan and my hair had naturally been bleached by the sun so it was like natural highlights and stuff and then when that faded i i my tan also faded Mm. and it was the bad look. 
So I, Trauma my, had, my friend was like a color like a color expert or something like that. I don't know. She does hair. And, <laughs> and she looked at you and screamed. Well, she was like, I think that you should put a little more like red tones in your hair. I think it would balance out your skin tone. You, the red does. Which is true. It looks very good. The red looks really good in your really hair. Really nice. When you had, I remember you had like very vibrant red hair at one point. Yes. It was really nice. Oh, I missed that. that. I was so upset about that. I only got to have that for a whole week. And I washed my hair one time and it turned so pink. Oh, really? So pink. It was a big old waste of time. I was so upset. Oh. So does your hair not grab the color very well? Not fashion or is it, colors. Or is it mostly just because it's like... Because I know that like virgin hair does better does with colors. a lot better. But fashion colors, so like b- bright blues, bright pinks, unnatural colors, like yeah. a bright red, like an aerial red, that don't hold well. fades very, very quickly. So people okay. don't wash their hair as often. Yeah. And I washed it a week after I'd gotten it done and it went bright pink. Dang. And I was like... Dang it. Well, what else did you do this week? I worked a lot. Oh. That was my life. Is there any uh, anything new or is it all just cleaning up messes? Um, Nothing new. It's, it's just a lot of scrambling at the moment to try and fix it. Yeah. But the morale is a lot better. Okay. And victory. So for the last, <laughs> victory. the last couple of weeks since we have been asked to take over, um, the park has gone up in in ticket sales. So <gasps> we were usually around 200, 300 people coming in. Uh-huh. And now we were, we were last week on Saturday night, so last night, uh-huh. we had 976 people Holy in the park. Yeah. That is crazy for that park. If you've never been there, it's it's not usually a ghost town, but like there's space there. Yeah. And, and I remember when, like back when the park was pretty fresh, I would go and it, a packed park like you can tell when it's packed like yeah. there's so many people everywhere uh but it is a lot of fun because you're like bumping you know you're with people and it, it feels like a town it, yeah it feels like a town and uh, people get very into it and they often come in their own costumes so it feels like there's even more characters that just exist in this world so it's really fun it is really fun but but that's what marketing can do for you because we had we so had is that is that like a big thing that you're doing right now is just pumping focusing a lot on the marketing. marketing well good but yeah I mean, so that, that was a good that, thing. It actually brought me to tears. That bodes really well. Yeah. I, I hope that that continues and things really yeah. continue going up from the Made park. me cry a little bit. I'm not going to lie. You did. Listen, I know how hard you've worked and you deserve every ticket sale. You deserve it. Well, I am i can't take credit. My marketing team has really pulled it out because I'm, I'm like, no, you have to just please. <laughs> just right. please do this. And but they you, I'm have just saying, I'm just saying, it. you... You really deserve a good win like that. Thank you. Because of, of how hard you've worked. But yeah, that's all That's all my life is right now. Just I think the work. biggest change is the fact that I'm back to the colors of our on our thumbnails. It looks wonderful. Tesla. 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 Are you doing like layers? Well, so I've had layers. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so because my hair was so damaged from all the bleaching and stuff from being Barbie, I was in a Barbie musical and I was cast as Barbie, which I know a lot of you are like, oh, she doesn't fit that stereotype, but that's why they cast me. Um it was kind of the purpose yeah. of the show. <laughs> yep. We'll talk about, I want to talk about Barbie the movie a little bit later because we both saw it last yes, week. Yes, yes, yes. And I want to talk a little bit about that. But uh, so, anyway, the, so this I, musical though that yes. you're referring to was written by, it's a local show. Yeah. And uh, because of trademark issues, was not called Barbie. Mm. It was called Barbara and Kenneth. Yes. Um, so she had aged a bit. She's been through life. She has over a hundred jobs and, uh, and and uh, much like most women, her body changed too. And she and so the whole show is about her um, revisiting a lot of her past and and oh, kind of like the Barbie movie, talking a lot about how people don't appreciate actually yeah. what she's done. Yep. And they think that she's just some blonde bimbo, but like she's tried to do all these things and still like again in the Barbie movie. She's done all these things as a woman, and it's still not good enough for people. Correct. Which I, then, I thought that was a really like insightful of Lauren, yeah. who is the the playwright, and an excellent, incredible, insightful writer. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it was interesting how those themes intersected in in the movie for yeah. her and for Greta Gerwig. Like even some of our jokes, like my feet always being in heels, yes. and and the movies, yeah, but and anyways, the way that her feet come down, yeah. It's yeah. there's a lot of things like that that. Yeah, it was an interesting correlation. I love it. But yeah. But yeah, so I dyed my hair. She wanted me, she originally told me that she wanted me to have a natural blonde look. So I was going to have my hair natural. And then um, we did it. 
so I went and auditioned for a Broadway show in January and I had to go back to my headshot color. And then right after that, we were like, oh, we need, like, I would like you, after I booked this job, they were like, I would like for you to have this hair. And yeah. so I went and I did it and it, um, my hair was really long. It was past my bosom and, uh, it didn't do very well. And so I had to wear a wig, which I think the wig looked a lot better. And then, um, it was, it looked a lot better. To more get, Barbie. It would, yeah. It fun. Yeah. And then to get rid of a lot of the dead, which is still very significantly there, um, they did what's called the shag haircut, mm-hmm. which I guess is kind of like popular like right now. Rock like, and roll. Yeah. yeah that Miley hip, Cyrus has hippie. it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's grown out because I got that in April. It looks good on you. Thanks. Yeah. But we're, we're going back to my, I think I just look better with like. The longer. Yeah. Okay. I feel, I personally yeah. feel like I look better. I don't. I don't care about pleasing other people. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. So, but yeah, toss, toss. (laughs) That's That's a wicked reference. If anybody, I don't know why I'm looking over there. Um, (laughs) I know, I know how, like, um, how mentally taxing these last few weeks have been. So I'm, it just makes me very happy to see you. You seem today, like we just went and had a, a lot of things just happened. It was really fun. It was kind of like the first episode where it took forever to set up. scrambling. (laughs) Yeah, it took a long time to set up because we tried a different location and then came back here and just filmed here. Um, but I've noticed you you seem like you had a, a little bit like more de-stressed. Like you've yeah. you feel a little bit more validated. Yes, but I also have been struggling with my personal life as well with that individual I was talking about, and um, I have decided to not talk to him as much because he's i'm recognizing some very not healthy patterns and um i don't like that kind of stuff in my life and so i've also kind of removed that as well Mm. that's very mature of you it sucks though i really i was really hopeful well often uh, as a 30 year old yeah often it is those are the correct choices (laughs) you're right if it's painful and sucks, often correct. That's what she said. Oh, painful and sucks. Yikes. <laughs> Speaking of Shrek, do you know how many times this week alone it's been referenced in my life? How many times? Seven. In what, Seven. what context? We were talking, well, a lot of people actually just brought up the movie and were quoting it. Oh. But a couple of times people would be talking about onions. And, and Shrek, how people course, were like, lay, like onions because, and I'm like... <clears throat> He follows me everywhere, <laughs> which I don't hate because we all know I love Shrek. As everyone should. As everyone should. Yeah. A wonderful man, that ogre. <laughs> wonderful indeed, man, that ogre. A wonderful man, indeed, an ogre. <laughs> ogre. What? Wait. What's that? You, ogre. Wait, let me, me do. <laughs> Pigs, wait. He hoofed and he poofed and he signed an eviction notice. That's really good. <laughs> you should be a voice actor. Cast me. <laughs> well, what about you? Um, How was your week? It was good. Um, we saw the Barbie movie. Yeah. Last week. And then I've mostly... It's been a pretty level... Oh, wait. Actually, I went to Ohio. <laughs> I you forgot did. about that. I sometimes have to go on work trips. Yeah. It's been kind of... I don't want to diminish... And, or try to compare, like, me being frustrated with work with you being frustrated at work because yours is ten times more difficult. <laughs> comparing apples to oranges. But, so, <laughs> I, I was pretty frustrated this week because sure. uh, I was offered a job that I wanted to get in, and then they rescinded it, kind of. So, like, they offered me... I've been trying to get into, like, copywriting more because I am a writer, and I would prefer to do that. And so... uh I, my boss like called me and was like, so do you want to be a copywriter? Cause I just talked to someone and it looks like there's a spot open. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And he's like, okay, great. Then in the next couple of weeks, we'll like change everything over. Like we'll get a new producer lined up and then you can go and like do that. <clears throat> I, I just ask you to stay for like a couple of weeks to like make sure that things are in order on that front. And I was like, yeah, of course that's totally fine. And then later I talked to the other person. I was like, so is this like moving forward? Am I good to go? And he's like, oh no, I have, that hasn't like not been approved yet. Like it's not happening. And I was like, 
The lack of communication. I know. It's insane that it, it's insane <clears throat> that like one that my boss, no offense, like did that and then like didn't follow it, like, up. didn't ask about anything, like didn't verify that things were ready to go. And then just said like literally offered me the job and then like said it was like That's not awful. Happening. I'm so, so sorry. Um part of the reason why I was excited about it is so that I didn't have to go <laughs> on this trip to Ohio where we just filmed warehouses. Oh. Yeah, it was not fun. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's fine. That's disappointing. It's For fine. some reason, when you, you had told me about that a couple days ago, and I was like, oh, well, maybe they'll, after your trip, maybe they would, oh, okay. No, like, I think it's not going to happen for months, probably. So, or maybe does he have like a different year. understanding of what a couple weeks means? I, I think that he misunderstood a conversation. I, I don't know exactly what happened, and I want to follow up a little bit to... Well, keep us updated because now I'm, things. I feel like I'm living in it. But, yeah, that was kind of disappointing. That sucks. So, I mean, it's, <clears throat> the nice thing is that I have a lot of outlets right now for writing. Sure. Um, I'm still working on the zombie thing. I've written a couple new drafts and sent it over to yep. producers. Yeah. And hopefully, what day is it? I'm supposed to chat with them, I think, next week. Today. Is the 6th. Is the 6th. Yes. Tis me mommy's birthday. <gasps> happy birthday, mommy. Happy birthday, mommy. Everyone wish my mommy a happy birthday. Even though this will come out in a month. Uh-huh. But, like... You but could, we don't know what month it is. It could come out any month. Yeah. Oh, that's true. It could be whatever month. <laughs> it could be whatever month. Um, Though we did talk about the 4th of July in one of the previous yeah, episodes. Yeah, we did, but... Who knows what month it is now? Yeah, it could be September. We don't know. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> the mystery. Uh. But yeah, so that, I've just been doing that. Went to Cincinnati. Ate Somalian food for the first time. Somalian food? Yeah. That sounds yummy. It was actually really good. Was there a lot of onions in it? Um, No. It was a lot of, I don't know for sure. It felt a little bit Eastern Asian. Oh. Like, um... Indian esque, but not quite. We do love that. Uh, mixed with kind of Ethiopian, a Gosh, little that bit. Sounds so. Kind of did you eat with your that hands? Kind of vibe. No, did oh. not. We didn't. I I assume that you normally do, but like. Sure, we're in America. In the restaurant, it. yeah, it's been Americanized, but <laughs> it was delicious. It was really really good. So. Highly recommend. Well, that sounds yummy, and I think I'd like to eat it. But the spices were excellent. Um. Yeah, and she gave us this homemade sauce that was like. Her family's sauce, she said. It was really delicious. Um, yeah, That's amazing. Listen, we're really getting nice. too commercialized with our restaurants. Bring back home this the li- home cooking. I'm pretty sure this was literally someone's living room that we were eating in. So oh my god, It was like, very, it felt very authentic. That's but it was, amazing. it was delicious. Oh man. Uh, yeah. There's so, a little a little place. Do you week. remember when John was leaving for the first time? to spain Spain? and we went it was like a little empanada place in provo yeah I and it was out of her backyard was it empanada oh wait they were empanadas is that how you say i don't think i came then i thought you. i was thinking of pupusas that's what it is it was that it was her yard though yeah she had like it was her house and then she had like 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 picnic tables set up and i don't know if i was there i don't remember being outside ever (laughs) No, but for that. <laughs> As says the person who has literally single-handedly turned your yard into this little respite of peace and tranquility. Mm, it's very weedy right now. But I, I don't, sometimes like weeds. I don't recall that. But I do have another story. Yeah. So coming back from... What? I don't recall that, but I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was really I'm funny. Sorry. I don't remember the... I... <laughs> I would like empanadas. <laughs> uh, I think they're pupusas. Where should I go? Is it called Is it pupusas? pupusas? There, I mean, there are yeah. two different things. There's empanadas are the little, like, I don't want to, like, diminish what they actually are, but, uh, like, uh, hot pocket <laughs> looking things. <laughs> like, you have pastry and yeah. stuff inside. And the, uh, and the uh, pupusas are, like, very thick tortillas with meat inside, meat and cheese. It was an empanada. Okay. I don't recall that. I'm sorry. That's okay, but go with your other story. So coming back from Ohio, we 
uh, first of all, nightmare of a trip. Second of all, uh, our flight got delayed by two hours. So we were just sitting at the airport forever. What airline did you fly? Delta. Oh, wow. I know. I think the reason it got delayed was because there was a lot of thunderstorms here in Utah at the time. And uh, the flight before uh, us. Nice! That was terrible! Good timing. It was really bad. How was your cafe read? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of like Hispanic themed foods happening right now. Empanada Cafe Rio. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Papusa. Um. <laughs> Anyways, two hour delays. Two hour delay. Delta. So we were just sitting there. I think th- part of it was the flight before us was going to Georgia, and they were delayed by a lot. So they were holding up the gate. What is happening? You're like laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason. I don't- <laughs> what was going on in Georgia that they were so delayed? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there. I, mean, <laughs> I wasn't there. Um, but they, yeah, it was delayed. And then, so we flew. We finally got out. We were originally supposed to land at like 10. Didn't land until midnight. But as we were coming here, we flew... Into Salt Lake, we were over Salt Lake, and the pilot comes on and says, uh, "It's too dangerous to land right now. We're just gonna f- hang out and see what happens." So we oh, circled. My panic would start. We literally circled for like thirty minutes. I would panic. Just sitting there. Shoot! Circling, somebody give me a circling. tranquilizer. Knock me the f out. And then, oh, we so like finally after thirty minutes, he's like, "Okay, we're gonna give it a shot." And I was give like, "Give it a wow. shot, <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, sir." <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> sir. <laughs> so, so we come from sir. our death spiral, and we start coming down into Salt Lake. And I have never experienced oh turbulence so crazy. I was like, not to give you a panic attack. White knuckling. Do you, it. do you need to? to no, give, it's fine. Get through it. I gotta know. <laughs> I, I was literally like lifted out of my seat because so like bumpy. It was crazy. I can't see. And because here, I don't know. If you were around, but it was like monsooning essentially. Is there it was, very, I was heavy, here. very heavy rain, lots of yeah. thunderstorms? I was, I was a part of that. And I, lots I of prayed for wind. it. Wind. Oh, you prayed for I it. I did. Thanks. You're welcome. It really messed my life I up too. Almost so. Died. Son of a. <laughs> <laughs> you almost killed me with religion. <laughs> um, dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so bumpy, crazy landing. Oh. Now a home. It's the gist. You okay? Gonna spit on the microphone? <laughs> you okay? I'm just gonna keep going so you can't swallow. <laughs> I'm just gonna make it terrible this whole time. <laughs> keep going. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> just spit on the ground. <laughs> this is a, this is my favorite form of torture. <laughs> just making you laugh over and over again. So you. <laughs> okay. I'll stop. That was close. There's just one single drop. <laughs> a single tear. No, you did really good. That was good. I'm sorry. It was that painful. That was funny. It was I good. Po- it was a good bit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel like I've just done something horrible. I, twice. Did you hear it go? <laughs> that was close. Yikes. It was a close one. I'm proud of you. It goes for another. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Did you see me second guessing? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that was my week. Oh, I'm really glad you didn't die, but truly, genuinely, that's terrifying. It was pretty wild. I've never, I've been like, I kept telling myself, like, he wouldn't come down if he didn't think he could make it. But mm-hmm. I don't Human know if that's true. So stupid sh- I don't know if that's true. Um, I'm alive. Well, he admit, I'm glad you're alive, but he also said, We're gonna try. Give it a shot. We're, gonna, what, we're gonna give it a shot. His actual words, yeah. Sir? Sir, excuse me, sir. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> can we shore that up a little bit gosh yeah it was pretty wild what the flip yeah <clears throat> so that was my week i have a funny story for you what's that this is a real real okay. story that happened with my family so growing up we would go snowmobiling every year and i'm from montana but we would drive to idaho to island park and one of the towns we would drive through to get home is called bozeman montana it's a lovely little town 
Oh, well, it's not so little anymore. It's definitely gotten wider, much like my pants. But um, <laughs> weight gain. <laughs> Anyways. I, I'm not judging you. My mom wanted taco time really, really bad. Like real, real bad. And so we went through the taco timeline. And my dad made an order. They come up to the to the window. And the lady asks my father, sir, would you like some hot sauce packets? And he was like, excuse me? And she said, would you... Would you like some hot sauce packets? And he was like, what? Oh. She's like, sir, hot sauce packets? And he's like, oh, uh, what? Has, has your sir? dad never heard of hot sauce <laughs> before? Is, the, is the story going to end with your dad learning what hot sauce Wait. is? Sir, would you like some hot sauce packets? And at this point, she's terrified. <laughs> My dad is like, what the <laughs> is a hot sauce smack it? <laughs> I think if I was the server and someone yelled that at me, I would say, that's a no. And my mom was like. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. So now I call hot sauce packets a hot sauce smack it. And I have since I was like 11. Oh, that's really nice. Your dad is a very sweet man. I love him. He makes me... My dad is complete opposite of me in the sense that he's very quiet. Somber. Very monotone. And I am not. Mm -hmm. But I will say, probably one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. That wasn't a bit he was doing. He just really couldn't hear in that moment in time. No, absolutely. (laughs) But one of the funniest guys. Like, sometimes I pee myself. Oh. He's funny. And it's usually because it's like super dry humor and he doesn't mean it and it's just it's Yeah, great. that was the best. Anyways, so there's a funny story. That's very Moving fun. on. Moving on. To the Barbie movie. Oh, the Barbie movie. You saw it twice. I did, I'm curious, yeah. from the first time to the second time, what did you notice different? What did I notice different? Did that make sense? Different? <clears throat> what, did I, what did you notice I different? Think, I think the second time I... Um, English. <laughs> I picked up a lot more on... Sorry. <laughs> you didn't even... <laughs> I acknowledge the fact that I said I was in, what did you notice different? It was inside of my brain. <clears throat> Much like um, the first time, our first episode when I said I wanted to ask you a question. Wait, what? A joke. Oh my god. I wanted to ask you a joke. Oh. That's not how you phrase it. I didn't know. English is hard. And I, it's a it's like a camera thing. I feel like you just say weird things when there's a camera rolling. Yeah. Anyways, what did you notice that was different from the first time around versus the second? I think I picked up a lot more on just references. Okay. Um, to things like different movies and and other Barbies and stuff. Just yeah. the, and the subtle jokes are just really fun. It was it's, very it's, clever writing. It's a very fun movie. Very funny. Um, just mostly that. But what I'm? What did you think of it on your first viewing last week? <sighs> Okay, I feel like I have a very unpopular opinion. Ooh. I very much liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was yeah. fun. There were moments that I was like, oh, that was so clever. Uh-huh. Um, but I did not get the same message out of it that ever, like every other woman that on my my feeds are getting. Okay. I, I related to Ken almost the entire time. Mm-hmm. Because here's this guy who has been... And this person, this, this being, whatever, who has been pining after this individual, really just wanting to be loved... And is continually looked over. And then when you get a morsel of knowledge, totally just takes it and runs with it and goes complete opposite direction. And is still constantly looked at as the problem. And Mm. it's like, it was so interesting. The, The thing that I really, really felt was lacking was there was a plus size Barbie in there. And though I loved that they showcased her, I did not feel like she got the same resolve as everyone else because it felt like she was either, I don't need no man. And then when she was brainwashed, obviously she was like, I'm only here to serve you. And mm-hmm. then she made that decision. I don't want to rub feet. Good for you. And then it ended up her being like, <laughs> I'm going to use my feminine wilds against this guy. Mm-hmm. And then there was no result. Like you didn't see her anymore. And I just wanted an end to, to her story. Like the presidential Barbie got an end and same with, um, the transgender Barbie, which loved that. Yeah. Loved that there incredible, was a transgender Incredible, incredible representation. I think overall, I think I think it's safe to say that there's a, a good thought into representation in the movie, for sure. For sure. But 
I think that that's a really interesting and I think a really important take that's in that in that she didn't get her yeah wrap up because she didn't really like you had presidential Barbie and you had like different career Barbies yeah but she you really didn't know what her thing was nope. at all. She Which is kind fine. Of, and she's I, a, this kind is of a background nitpicky, thing. right? Like, really, but, the overall. But I thing... think I think that's why it's so important to have like a diverse writing writers room. Because sure. if you were there, you could say like, can we can we just give her a title? Like, can she yeah. be a doctor? Can she be? And maybe she was, and I just don't remember. But like, I don't specifically remember her title, and that is probably a problem. Her title was just Barbie. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I think I think overall there was a, a pretty cool. Um, reach it diversity yeah and i appreciate that i am sad that there was no plus size kens i know because i was like i'm fat too <laughs> <laughs> are there though did has mattel made a curvier barbie I don't male know. I don't or a know. curvier again I'm not sure me either um Look have they that. made have they made Mattel? specifically a curvier barbie though yeah oh, okay there are some hourglass shaped barbies <clears throat> and there's yeah, yeah. shorter ones too like there's there's all shapes and sizes and different yeah. skin tones and all of that it's, it's fantastic but i'm i'm sure at that point then they probably would have thought about a can but no ca- none were casted and i was like no oh. nope not to make it about me because yeah. it really wasn't for me in a lot of ways but it also was, it was which is which is kind of the point of the movie right i think that that reading is fine and i think i think it's an important reading too because like relating to ken more because especially you're in a position right now where you're in a very volatile love situation emotionally so i think that that one-sided love i think correct and so i think that that is not an, a bad reading i think that you're just in a state maybe that sure. that's what you connected with yeah and i think that that's i think that's the cool thing about the movie yeah. in general is that there were a lot of like volatile emotions tied to it mm. i think that that's the really amazing thing and the and the beautiful wrap-up of like her with the founder at the end saying uh i can't remember what the actual I created line was. you to be whatever you wanted to be or something like that um yeah something like that but the the line was so beautiful like super beautifully written and, and specific are you but okay it was like, with that and she said you can be whatever you want to be so, something something beautiful i don't know look on here i might tell you Chat GBT, what Let's was that see. line? Let's remember that line. Um, but yeah, while you're looking that up, um, America Ferreira's, like, the part of the movie where I felt so truly connected to the female Barbies, or female presenting Barbies, I, um, it was when America Ferreira was talking about how women have to jump through all these hoops to be, and to, to just live. And that's where yes. I was like, woof. Yeah, and and That's again, again connecting with with Lauren, and I think that this speaks a lot to like the female experience because Lauren, mm-hmm. in her show about Barbara, Barbara and Kenneth, um, ha- had a very similar rant. Yeah, um, and I don't want to call it a rant because there's negative connotations to that, but a very similar speech, monologue, monologue um, about how women have to be polar opposites in everything they have to be these things to be satisfactory or else you know, you know worthless you know what i mean um so i i thought that that was a really incredible like connection between that show. two completely different shows very different content wise yeah to very be, different but um that messaging was really it was powerful amazing. and also it was, I mean, you kind of said this in a, in a different way, but it was also really affirming for me knowing that Lauren, our friend who wrote the Barbara and Kenneth musical, mm-hmm. could do that. She could do, she could write a screenplay because she is in, like, she's in that same mindset of, of Greta and the people who wrote the Barbie film. Like, she, she could have sat in the writer's room and, and pulled out that script I was just, it was just affirming to me that like, Hey, you're doing, you're doing what you should be doing. <clears throat> but I also feel like I have a different point of view too, because I did play Barbara. Like I, I played mm-hmm. her and I spent a lot of time with Lauren and, and thinking about the character and working on those lines. And, and a lot of the things that I learned like NASA and having it, it them taking them what, like 40, 50 years to get properly fitted spacesuits for women. Yep. Like and the and t- hundred tampons. 
the hundred have you heard okay okay really quick sorry this is a big side note have you heard the song about the comedian on tiktok that made a song about 100 tampons about that event i don't think so i'm gonna find that okay so the but before that sorry the quote that i'm thinking of is at the end and i think that this isn't a really incredible way to end it because the whole time there's a lot about patriarchy there's a lot about women but at, at its core the movie is very much about people coexisting yeah and about being together and, and being able and, to do the same thing yeah and being kenneth yeah um but there there's the line when she's talking to the fa- the creator of barbie where she's like often like are you sure you want to be human like it's often a very uncomfortable experience um and we do weird things when we're uncomfortable humans do ter- like crazy things when they're uncomfortable like and they have to do things to compensate for it like make up barbie or whatever yeah and I think that that is, like, a really incredible way to end that movie. And, like, tears. every Like, both times I saw it, tears. Because it it's such an all-encompassing, like, wrap-up in that, like, no, this is, it's, this is about human experience. This is mm-hmm. about coming together. This is about processing. It's about um, being able to sit with discomfort, being able to be human and not be villainized for it. Mm-hmm. Being able to make a mistake, like inviting the patriarchy into Barbie land or whatever. Um, but still examining what's appropriate and, and what's not. And absolutely. Being and, willing to compromise with things that you're not usually willing to compromise with. Absolutely. And also, and also controlling your thoughts. And controlling yeah, men. Controlling your thoughts. And sometimes women. And, and but and obviously also a lot of very strong feminine themes, which were very important. Um but it, having that just way to wrap it up, I thought was incredibly insightful and, and really beautiful um, of Greta Gerwig. Okay. Did she write it and direct it? She was one of the writers, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Let me just... Madonna's, you can get more than just is this the, the oh, sorry. TikTok? This is not an ad. <laughs> this... <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Um... <laughs> So I just, I want to credit this comedian before we listen to it, since we're about to play it. Uh, this is Marcia Belsky. Um, and super funny. I've watched a few of her other TikToks. This is a YouTube video. But this is a song about, um, this, the title of the video is Proof That NASA Doesn't Know Anything About Women. <laughs> Remember when NASA sent a woman to space for only six days and they gave her 100 tampons, 100 tampons. Her face is so funny too, I'll just show you the video. (laughs) And they asked, will that be enough? Cause they didn't know if that was enough These are our nation's greatest minds They are literally rocket scientists They also tied the tampons together By the strings like sausages Put the tampons A hundred tampons I can pick sure it now come with me i'm sally ride and i'm going to space for the first time i'm walking tall i feel so proud then i see a man running panic through the crowd he's holding a large bag i think what can this be and then he hands 100 tampons to me and then he has 100 tampons to me. Can you imagine that? I can't. Like, you're you're literally probably like one of the most intelligent people on the planet. And some dude, first of all, she's going to pack tampons if she needs tampons. <laughs> like, you, yeah. can trust, you can trust her <laughs> to, to figure out her own needs. If she asks you to pay for them, they can't you could. trust that. I know. Men don't trust that. But, like, maybe she'll, she could ask you to pay for them, and that would be lovely of you. Yeah. 
But I think she's more than capable of dictating her own needs. <laughs> also, it's not wild. The up house balloons. You don't tie those things together. <laughs> That's the funniest <laughs> I've ever heard. Like the having no concept of how they are used. <laughs> Is okay, but that's wild. a trend right now on on the social medias in general, where women will show show their boyfriends how they work, and they're shocked as hell. I will say the first time, gay, but <laughs> so so obviously not a lot of Hashtag gay. not a lot of experience. <laughs> but the first time I discovered how they function uh-huh. when I was younger, it is quite shocking. To, especially coming from a very um, religious background. Where it's, they don't it's teach just, you anything. Where they, first of all, don't teach you anything and tell you, do not put anything in there. Correct. Right? And then to discover that, like, that's how you do it is kind of shocking. Yep. And I can't imagine how it is for, a like, a 12-year-old girl or younger yeah. to, f- so, like, realize how that works. <laughs> you know what I mean? Obviously you do, but like, <laughs> but I have that... a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's actually, that's, that's where the breakdown in, in mature conversations that didn't take place is. Yeah. Doesn't happen in the home because parents for some reason think that school is going to do it and the parents don't take the opportunity. Or they're scared. Or they're uncomfortable because they were never taught themselves how yeah. to have those type of conversations. And I'm sorry, but. I, for a long time, I thought about becoming a sex therapist because I was sexually molested when I was a little kid and that really f***ed up your brain. But there's a lot of stuff about the human body that is never, ever, ever discussed. Mm-hmm. And little children from the young... The, I, I personally believe this. This, If you don't agree with this, I totally respect your opinion. But it would help a lot more for situations like I went through if I had known the proper terminology growing up, like if I had been taught that, like what a penis is versus what a vagina is and that it's not appropriate for people to touch that unless you give them consent and also you should be old enough. And to say, if, if this happens, this is what you do. Exactly. And then the smaller, less scary conversations about menstruation and how the the sanitary napkins work and tampons work. Like it, that, that should not be a scary conversation mm-hmm. in any way, shape or form. Now, That's a maturity thing. And then think of that. And there are rocket scientists that didn't know. <laughs> For any of you out there, I'm quoting the show that I was in. For any of you out there who don't know how many tampons are needed for a normal cycle, it's anywhere between zero, if you don't use any, and maybe like 36. Mm-hmm. For a whole cycle. For a whole cycle. Not for six days. And <laughs> some people... Well, th- well, a cycle can well, be sure. anywhere from d- people's people's period is different but right. that's six days but a hundred tampons that is still too many but again <clears throat> it's it, not if, if she needs it it's in her bag already exactly <laughs> exactly it's they also so presented her with um, a specially made makeup kit because they they didn't think about making sure she had proper fitted clothing but they made sure she had makeup to wear yeah. and it was the same thing with barbie they made sure that her clothes fit her to show her curves, mm-hmm. but she also had m- makeup and all these accessories that she needed. Not thinking about, I don't know, dehydrated food, making sure she had enough water, like yeah. the essentials, toilet trays. Yeah. Come on now. And th- didn't run up to the dudes and be like, I don't know. Yeah. They didn't ask a, them if they needed any like, some I don't toilet know. paper. What do dudes need? Nothing. <laughs> potato chips <laughs> preparation h maybe yeah. shaving cream i don't know <laughs> <laughs> this on, on conversation prep. what would men need in space preparation h on prep. <laughs> yeah just having sex with each other oh i was saying preparation h oh for prep. hemorrhoids yes Got it. but also sorry different worlds <laughs> hashtag gay <laughs> um that's another thing that people don't talk about yeah. That is, that's a conversation that should be had in high school, in, in junior high as well. Gay sex? Yes. Ye- yeah. Sex education in general. Yeah. But also, ha- the Catholic Church has a really good program for couples who have never had sex and are about to get married. They go through basically marriage prep and they talk about 
the human body and how they function ejaculation like mm. like climaxing for women and they talk about the anatomy they also have here's the thing they do that in public schools until people stop them the only which is thing crazy. i remember when i was in in high school about that specifically was i was in i was a sophomore in high school and we were having the class and we had to watch the miracle of life video and there was a girl in my class who was pregnant she was like seven months pregnant and she was vomiting through the entire class honestly same but not pregnant but the, i'm just saying like the that birth, was the only birth time video? we talked Wild. about it <laughs> yeah um the only Women's, time women have to go through a I lot think... of sh- it's yeah it's crazy the but overall yeah sex education is a huge thing and to be able it would be interesting to see what would happen with abortion rates with like all those things yeah obviously with better sex education we know that generally with better sex education fewer abortions people understand how to how contraception works yep um, people understand how to track periods, yep. which I think is another important skill to, that you should be able to teach. Um, and then additionally, I think with better sex education, people would be able to like discover their sexuality a lot sooner and it be more acceptable because then they could be like, oh, that is what I want. Yeah. And then be able to like, and it's crazy to me that like people will just assume that that will brainwash or convince people to be gay or like be different when it's like if they're attracted to that they're gonna find a way exactly the internet is very much a thing right now (laughs) very much a thing it's a much better idea to discover all those things in a very very secure safe safe area instead of say going somewhere and getting hurt or contracting something the, or like, worse getting killed in the 80s when it was like even more taboo yep horrible crisis a horrible aids crisis because people weren't willing to talk about it they weren't willing to talk about how to be safe uh talk about sex in general and yep. even less being gay anyways and things started to change when princess diana went to that hospital in africa and hugged that little boy mm-hmm. because she was yeah. like you guys are dumb incredible there were there were like yet incredible another woman, people. a blonde woman, changing history. That's so good. I, I'm thinking of like Tick Tick Boom too, where oh. Jonathan would had uh, all of his friends were just dying around him, yeah, because of AIDS, um, and the journey that he went through to do something to bring awareness to it. Yeah, it man. Was... Look, see, this is what happens when you when you have new content out there that was based on something that has been around for a very long time yeah barbie this movie has evoked a lot of conversation that needs to happen absolutely and it's incredible so continued snaps to yeah. is it gerda or greta greta greta, greta. greta. bless you <clears throat> you amazing human being you should you have you seen ladybird too yes really fantastic S- saoirse ronan in that was so, so good. freaking good but so was sheldon's mom incredible Th- that casting was fantastic really but the good. story and the down-to-earth conversation that such a yeah. good film such really good, good. Film. greta is an incredible filmmaker really get her i'm f- glad that she got give her more work dude you know what else is crazy to me the amount of times women have like directed first iterations of movies and then they give the sequels to men and you're like like they're broadly successful and then they're like okay now let's just have a little have a yep. guy do the second one and and then it turns out and it flops and you're like I wonder how that happened so crazy upsetting. could you imagine that... if they did a barbie 2 and they just had like Chris a man do it? <laughs> it'd be about ken but like oh it w- yeah it would be it... about how ken is sad yeah and I think that we should talk about that too. I I love this feminist movement and talking more about about women and what they're experiencing in regards to work and pay discrepancies and and their health and and how they're expected to look a certain way and and still be a meek and mild and and whatever and not have a f- voice. Yeah. But also because of this movement, a lot of, and again, if this is offensive to anybody, I apologize. But we are forgetting to talk about the importance of men. And how good they can be when they are educated and, and how much good they bring to us. Like there, there are a lot of people that I have met that have done incredible things for women, but they don't get recognized because the negative outweighs the positive. 
And I don't think that's right. Definitely, yeah. I, I think it should be, the movie's about equality and working together, and I feel like we should be doing the same thing and making sure that men are also recognized for the good that they're doing. They do a lot of bad <laughs> They do a lot. <laughs> and it's not okay. But I think don't it's, focus just on that. I think it's fair to say that most modern feminist movements do focus a lot more on an equality yeah. zone. So I, I think that that's part of it. I think part of feminism is like femininity in men, like allowing yourself space for yeah actual emotions to be able, because I think emotional connection and emotional, emotional maturity is a big part of draw, like ego death and like making sure you're not like, like allowing your ego to cloud a judgment. And I think that was another big part of the Barbie movie is like, Maybe it can be Barbie. Maybe it's Barbie and it's Ken. Right. And so, like, I I think that that is the beautiful thing about feminism in general is like it it isn't about just women. It's about like creating an environment where we're all mature and safe and helping one another instead of yeah. like looking at somebody as being a sex patriarchal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. yeah. I, I think it was an incredible movie, and I'm seeing it twice. It was, was vibrant and beautiful, and Margot Robbie was beautiful. She's so freaking good. That as well. I also love that they made a commentary on casting her as Barbie. I know they did it for a so reason. Funny. They did it for a reason mm-hmm. for more than just oh she looks like her, but they also were making a statement when they cast her. <laughs> yeah. And Helen, um, oh my gosh, Helen the, Mirren. Helen Mirren, incredible. She's a goddess. Did you know so, that she and Liam Neeson dated? No, they but it doesn't fully surprise me. They dated and lived together for four years. I was like, why didn't you get married? They <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to. Babies. Sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes you just want to f*** Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> or you just want to f*** Helen Mirren. Yeah, seriously. Which, because, have you seen her in her 80s? I think she's Incredible. in her 80s and she looks f- good. <sighs> yeah. And on Incredible. that note, uh, you had some questions about vocals, though. Didn't you have questions? Yeah, so, um, wow, this is a big shift. Apologies. Are you okay, babe? 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 I need you to, I need you to go back and, and hear the sound that you just made. What sound did I make? Oh, you'll have to go back and listen to it in editing. That was amazing. What sound did <laughs> I make? I don't know. I can't re- replicate it. It was amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. This is a big shift. But, big I, so Jonathan shift. is a music director. Yep. And you are an incredible vocalist and performer. You're very nice. Um, I am not. One, two. I have wanted to sing for a long time, but I don't. I, I don't think I'm doing it right. Um, so I was like thinking about vibrato. Yeah, vibrato is when your voice has a natural. Um, wave to it or a timber so are there people that just don't have that at all yeah there are some people who don't have it at all which is not a bad thing yeah maybe that's me uh because okay so overall i think tonally i think i can hear tones and match them okay yeah sure um so i don't think i'm fully like tone deaf and i think i know when i'm off Mm -hmm. if i'm like really being honest with myself sometimes i'll try to like convince myself <laughs> but if i'm really being honest with myself I'm, i feel like i'm i know when i'm not there sure <clears throat> um but vibrato i cannot do unless i am like either shaking my head which i know is incorrect or like trying to force my voice box to vibe to like move you're, like there's yeah. like muscles in your throat so i've watched videos where they've said that that's something that you should do but i don't know that that's true either and I've been told recently, to, like an hour ago, you need to burp, hun. Yes. Yeah, Honey, you want to burp? <laughs> sorry. No, it's okay. You can burp. Uh, so. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so- <laughs> Cafe Rio was really messing with me. Um, very yummy though. Um, so I th- I feel like it depends on the vocal coach because I had a voice teacher that told me that. Um, there's two, there's a head voice, so your higher voice and a chest voice. Uh And then I have one friend who's got a voice teacher that really says that there's, there is no difference, that it's all one. 
And I'm oh. like, no, there's clearly a break, and it's called the passaggio. There's an actual term for it in your right. voice. Right, right. But it's fine. Um, vibrato, what I've been taught in my voice lessons is that vibrato comes when you are when you are so in control of your body and it, it comes out naturally because of your, your diaphragm. So if you have enough air in there and you're pushing it out and you're focusing on other things, the natural timber will come out. Um, and then I'll and go do, to have shows. you felt that as you sing? Um, when I listen back, I can hear the vibrato and I think, Oh, that's cute. But, Oh, so it's not something that you feel like you produce in the moment. Yeah. Like you I don't can't pay really attention it. to it. Cause I'm usually interesting. Thinking okay. of other things. But that, that actually mentally, Maybe works for me a little bit better. Sure. But it's interesting because all of my voice teachers that I've had since I graduated high school have all said that if your vibrato is really, really fast, like say Amanda Seyfried Mm -hmm. or... or Ben Platt. Ben Platt. It's because you don't have enough... um, Breath support. Breath support. And I find that interesting because both are incredibly talented vocalists, but a lot Hmm. of people don't like Amanda Seyfried because of her vibrato. A lot of people don't like Ben Platt because Because of his vibrato. Because of his vibrato. But I, I I think it's just what you're taught and how you're raised. I should get a vocal teacher. You should. <laughs> I, I would really I will be interesting. say it's incredibly distracting when you go to a show and you watch someone sing and they go. Absolutely. <laughs> and and I understand that I'm not doing it correctly when I do that, for sure. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just interested in like what the correct thing for me would be. Sure. But I also want you to know that I go to a lot of professional shows and people on the stage will do that. Oh. So it's it's not super uncommon. It's just incredibly distracting. Yeah. And oftentimes it makes me wonder if their vocal cords Well, that's that's the other thing too is that I've heard that it calluses. damages you. It does. Quite a bit. Because your vocal cords aren't supposed to rub together at such a high level. <laughs> and that's what you're like doing. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going we're gonna to play a game from now on, which is guess the burp, and it's guessing which of us just burped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are ogres. <laughs> Shrek um, and Fiona. So good. So, yeah, I think uh, part of, I think part of why vibrato specifically has made me curious is, is because I'm not sure if I'm singing correctly. Well, does your throat hurt afterwards? Yes. Then yeah, you're singing correctly. <laughs> but I, isn't that true for most? Like if you're singing a lot, you can get super hoarse. Then it, you but get after sore. like two or three songs, you shouldn't you shouldn't be feeling like your throat hurts. Mm-mm. So, um, some tips for good vocal health: mm-hmm. steaming your th- your voice. So you get you can get one of those things where you steam your voice, or you can just. Put a, a towel over your head and stand over a stove with a boiling pot of water and just in, breathe in the steam or get in a really steamy shower. Okay. Um, what does do, that do? It it helps moisturize your throat. Keep it lubricated. Yeah. Okay. Lots and lots of water. Okay. Lots and water. And then vocal rest is a huge, huge thing. And then just also... like not talking. Yeah. Okay. Like there are Broadway stars that will... They have... They're called dark days. Right. And they will... They do... They do eight shows a week usually. Yeah. And they'll have a dark day. And some of them actually don't talk on their whole dark day because they're trying to save I their would, throat. That would suck yeah. doing that many shows. Sounds crazy. And then, I think about Taylor Swift and I'm like, girl. Yeah. Chill out. She, the, like 150 shows, is it? That's wild. I think so on her tour, yeah. And almost every night. Yeah. Crazy. And like Justin Bieber had to cancel when he was a younger right. baby. He had to cancel some of his shows because he wasn't singing properly. Okay. I, I know that Adele, a lot of people claim that Adele has a similar problem where she's not singing properly and I think she actually often... had, um, she had something nodes. go wrong with it. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I can't remember if it was nodes, but it might've been. Okay. She had surgery. She had I, surgery. I know that Miley Cyrus did as well because this yeah. is interesting. Okay. Miley Cyrus's voice is fascinating. I actually love it now. I do too. I, like her newest album is crazy and I love it. Like her voice is so interesting. Yeah. Um, as a child, I guess like her vocal coaches were just not good and destroyed her voice, like absolutely wrecked her voice as a kid. And then it just progressed into this kind of chain smokery, but like mm-hmm. very unique sound. Um, Hashtag me. <laughs> chain smoker. <laughs> I'm not a chain smoker, but I do. I have a raspy voice. Um, 
I haven't really noticed. But yeah, interesting. So I I don't know how to get into that place where I'm singing properly. Is what I'm. I guess the it whole takes thing. a lot of a lot of lot of work. So if you're actually looking for a voice coach, it's gonna take probably like a year for you to get into a place where you feel confident about how health like how healthy you're singing. How does um like for you? How did a vocal coach tell you or help you get into that place where you felt like you were singing properly? Um, they helped me figure out placement. Mm -hmm. because I used to sing from my throat a lot and now I've been able to figure out like giving myself a little bit more space up here Mm -hmm. and, and projecting more towards my nose and like, like out that way. Um, I still do sometimes when I'm belting, I still do revert back to that and I have, it's yeah. But I also sing regularly. Like I sing every day and I do my vocal warmups every single day. Okay. Um, just to keep things like loose. Cause I've heard that's part of it too, is like making sure you're very loose in your throat. And I'm not the best at this, which is really, really bad because I get kidney stones a lot. But my voice also needs to be properly hydrated so I can perform well. Mm-hmm. And then getting the right amount of sleep. And they taught me how, like, what good posture is. And when you're just standing still versus when you're on stage and you're moving and stuff. Your diaphragm is really important. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, we can talk more about that, or I can introduce you to my voice teacher, who is amazing. Shout out to my love, Matt. I love you so much. Thanks, Matt. Oh, and um, yeah, that's it. Oh, was I was, it? I was, was just it gonna, it? I was just gonna end the episode by thanking people who watched our first episode. But I, oh yeah, the first episode just <laughs> came out. So like last week, the first episode came out. Yeah. Um, it was just so weird because we filmed it like two months. ago. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Yeah, it was and so funny. F- for anyone, <laughs> that one was wild. I feel like the more we've gotten, the better it's gotten. So thanks yeah. for bearing with us. Uh, yeah. If you've gotten to this point, I I think that we're getting into a good rhythm and we've ditched our co host, Chat we GPT. We did. We did. Um, we did. Though things are going well. still prominent, like we still use him every once in a while. Every now and again. Yeah. But uh, he puts us in a box. Yeah. And he should be the only one in a box. A computer box. Yes. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> so thank you for, for listening and watching. And please subscribe. If you would like to follow us, you can follow us individually at... Jace Van Am. And Tenanigans. And you're the onesie I want. And you can follow us on the Instagrams. TikTok. Uh, any, wherever you get your podcasts. All those yeah. things. From... Uh, la- okay, it's Laugh Track with JNT. Uh-huh. And then on YouTube, Life's Laugh Track. Uh-huh. On uh-huh. Spotify, Life's Laugh Track. Uh-huh. On Apple Podcasts, Life's Laugh Track. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also email us if you, if truly, genuinely, we've we've said this before, but I haven't actually looked at the email. So if you give have, us some sorry. email or DMs, yeah, send us send us some messages on things that you would like us to talk about. Because let's be honest, hot take up here. <laughs> and on that and note, that... <laughs> I'm Tenanigans. I'm tired. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we are funny.